After a U.S. Open that broke Phil Mickelson and shattered the psyche of others, the CVS Charity Classic was the perfect tonic for some golfers who were stressed out by the weekend in New York. After the surprise retirement of Ted Johnson and the official announcement that Teddy Bruschi will not play this year, the Patriots finally get some good news. I'm Paul Devlin. Welcome to Sports Desk at Training Camp. The Giants have retooled their lineup, signing Ray Durham, Edgardo Alfonso, and Marquise Grissom. Do you feel the D-backs are feeling the pressure to pull off more trades now? On Tuesday night, a trio of Red Sox will celebrate a first in the Midsummer Classic. David Ortiz will make his first start at first base. Mark Loretta will make his first appearance in the starting lineup. And Jonathan Papelbon will experience the game for the first time. The Red Sox crank it up near Miami. Good morning, I'm Paul Devlin. Thanks for checking out the show presented by Comcast. As the calendar turned over from June to July, the Red Sox had to turn the page after suffering their first loss in nearly two weeks. On Friday night, the Marlins busted the team's 12-game winning streak. Oh, but on Saturday night, the Sox turned the tables on the fish in a big, big way. First batter of the game, Coco Crisp. He's going to lead off and draws the walk off Brian Moeller. Next batter, Alex Cora. He went to the University of Miami and he shows Moeller the direction to Coral Gables. Two on, nobody out. After David Ortiz popped out, Manny Ramirez does this. The three run rip to right. His 2,000th career hit and he does it in style. His 21st home run of the season. Top of the third, David Ortiz unloads. A huge blast to center field. His 24th of the season, 4-1 Red Sox. Ortiz. Not done. In the fourth inning, oh my, he connects. A two-run shot is 25th of the season. Red Sox up 6-1. to one. Top of the sixth, now 7-1. Ortiz trying to make it three home runs. Could be, might be. Oh, but he just misses. Alex Cora is going to come around to score, and the Red Sox had an 8-1 to one advantage. Next batter is Manny Ramirez. And Manny is styling and profiling. Starting to do the pose again. The two-run shot is 22nd of the season. 10-1 Red Sox. How about this? Ortiz and Manny, five for eight, four home runs, nine RBIs. Manny Del Carmen came in, and Manny Del Carmen doing the job facing pitch hitter Joel Bouchard, and Bouchard goes down swinging. Red Sox, they led 11-3 after six. They go on to win it 11-5. When Peter Shirelli was introduced as the new general manager of the Bruins, he said he wanted to change the culture in Boston. Well, Shirelli is on his way to blowing it up. Thanks to his guidance, the Bees made a big splash on day one of free agency. On Saturday, the team side, Zadino Chara, one of the best defensemen in the NHL. Chara, who is the biggest defenseman in the league at 6'9", inked a five-year deal with $37.5 million. Playing for Ottawa last year, Chara finished fourth in the voting for the Norris Trophy, given to the NHL's top defenseman. Chara is coming off his best season in 71 games. He racked up 16 goals and 43 points. In Chara's eight-year career with the Ottawa Senators and New York Islanders, Chara has 57 goals and 118 helpers. He likes to mix it up as well, spending 901 minutes in the penalty box. After getting Chara, the Bees went on the offensive, signing Mark Savard. Playing center for Atlanta last year, Savard had a breakout season, scoring 28 goals and finishing with 97 points in 82 games. In his seven-year career with the Thrashers, Calgary Flames, and New York Rangers, Savard has 133 goals and 401 points in 503 games. Savard is a native of Ottawa. Chara played there for the Senators. You think Peter Shirelli, who was born there and worked for the Senators, had something to do with getting them to Boston? I think so. They've already signed a deal for $20 million over four years. Meanwhile, Hal Gill's career in Boston is officially over. The Concord, Massachusetts native signed a three-year deal with the Toronto Maple Leafs for $6.3 million. Yeah, you go, Hal. In eight years with the Bruins, the big defenseman played in 626 games, racking up 20 goals and... 97 points. Straight ahead on the show, we're talking soccer, World Cup action, and the revolution taking on Red Bull New York. Plus, Annika and Michelle Wee have their eyes on the big prize in golf. Highlights from the U.S. Open in Newport, Rhode Island are on the way. And Andre Agassi says goodbye to Wimbledon. And you're going to see it. 
That's all next on Sports Desk. With 36 holes to play on Sunday, the Women's U.S. Open is up for grabs. The leaderboard is jammed with stars of the past, stars of the present, and a 16-year-old kid playing like she's been down this road many times before. Monica Sorenstam getting revved up. Par 3, fifth hole, gets the birdie to go. She finished with a 71. She's at minus two for the tournament. Pat Hurst, out of nowhere. You betcha, she's tied with Sorenstam at two under. Michelle Wee, par four, third hole. And Michelle is gonna like this one. I measured it, it's within five feet. She would make the birdie putt. That got her to one under. Then on the par four, seventh, check this out. Huge chunk, a little fat, but it's all right. It's better than all right. An outstanding shot. We needed this for the par and the save. And she would get that one to go. She finished the day even par, two shots back of Sorenstam and Hurst. Jamie Parker has more on Sorenstam, who's going after that title. She hasn't won in a long time. The Red Sox have must really missed the win column. After seeing their 12-game winning streak busted on Friday, the Sox got mad and muscled up. David Ortiz and Manny Ramirez doing most of the damage with two home runs apiece. Don and Jerry have more from South Florida. Thanks very much. Well, after the Red Sox 12-game winning streak came to an end, the Red Sox brought the bats out in Game 2 of the series. John Lester getting the start in the series finale should be a great game. And a great day for the Boston Bruins. They make a big statement by signing Dino Chara and Mark Savard. So good start for the Bruins. All right, that's going to do it for this edition of Sports Desk. For the entire crew, I'm Paul Devlin. Have a great day, everybody. Bill Belichick demands that his players be tough and resilient in the face of adversity. He expects them to stay focused when the world around them is falling apart. And he wants only those who put the team before everything else. On Sunday, Belichick lived by his law, going to work after his father's death. You know, coach this game with a heavy heart. Um, my dad passed away. I found out about it in the middle of last night. Um, you know, obviously, had a tremendous influence on my life personally, uh, and particularly in the football aspect. It was great to be able to share some of the tremendous memories uh, with him and some of our recent successes. Belichick didn't share his feelings with his team before the game. To use it as motivation would have gone against everything that Belichick stood for. The son did as his father would have wanted him to, and he coached the team while dealing with incredible pain, something that moved every member of the Patriots. He uh, just made mention of it to the team after he said his comments about the game, and uh, you know there was a, a sigh for him, and, and I think everyone realizes uh, how tough that would be. You know, just the incredible, just the way he's there for us, he's there through, through everything, through thick and through thin. You know, it's, it's something that, you know, we all have incredible respect for him for that. And uh, we, we, we try to let him realize after the game that we're here for him and, uh, you know, we're, we're going to miss his father. Steve Belichick was the coach's coach, the father who taught his son everything he knew about the game. He watched Bill flourish into one of the game's best innovators and motivators, his place in the Hall of Fame assured. Last February, for the first and only time, they'd share the national spotlight, producing an image that most fans will never forget. On Saturday night, Steve Belichick died a football man through and through. You know, yesterday he did what he enjoyed doing. He went and watched Navy play, watched them win. Uh, some of his former players were there, uh, had dinner and spoke with them after the game. And uh, like he normally does Saturday night, sitting around watching college football. And um, his heart just stopped beating. So I'm sure that's the way he would want it to end. Bill Belichick will honor his father using the lessons he learned along the way. He will coach as his father would have wanted him to, with a steely resolve and a laser-like focus that has made him the best coach in the game. Reporting for Sports Desk, I'm Paul Devlin.